The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. May the words of the Gospel be on my mind, on my lips, and in my heart. On a Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. So Jesus told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. Jesus said, When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline the table in the place of honor. For a more distinguished guest than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, Give your place to this man, and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, My friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Jesus said to the host who invited him, When you host a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their, inab uh, because of their inability to repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. We remain standing as we invoke the Holy Spirit. Together. Um, Holy Ghost, Creator, bless, and in our hearts, Take up thy rest, come with thy grace, and heavenly aim, to build our hearts with love as we, to fill the hearts which thou hast made. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Please be seated, my dear brothers and sisters. In my first parish, when I was giving a sermon, much like right now, a this is in California where there is lots and lots of homeless people. A homeless person walked in the church, as happens many times here too. And he walked in the church while I'm giving the sermon and he sat down in the back of the church. And all of a sudden I see that the people around him started to move away. Get up and start moving away. So he got up and he moved to like the middle of the church and sat down there in the middle. And the people also started getting up one by one and started moving away. So then he came to the front sat in the front and all the people cleared away. So he he was, he was got up and I see him and he went all the way to the front and sat down on the floor, on the carpet there in the church. And all of a sudden, this one gentleman, an older gentleman, I think he was in his 80s, 
got up from his seat and went by to the homeless young men and sat next to him. And he sat next to him. There is a lot of churches that have a gathering of people, but not a gathering of disciples of Jesus Christ. Mutual adoration societies. Hmm? <laughs> the world has enough gatherings of people, but not enough gatherings of disciples, followers of Jesus. Church is often just that, a gathering of people, but not a gathering of disciples. We're not interested in following Jesus. We're interested in feeling good. Because I go to church every Sunday, huh? I'm married in the Catholic Church. How many people say that? I'm married in the Catholic Church. I got my baptism, my confirmation, so and so check mark. I'm good with God. Huh? I'm not like the rest of these people. Isn't that what the Pharisees said? I pay my tithe. I give 10%. I'm good with God. I'm not like the rest of these sinners who are not married, who go to the strip. I'm talking about the strip. You're not strip clubs, okay? Uh, I'm not like the rest of these people. I, you know, I don't go to the casino. I don't get drunk. Uh, got my life in order. How many people in church, and I, I've been a priest now for 12 years. <clears throat> Father, so-and-so is going to communion. She shouldn't be going to communion. Why not? Well, she lives with so-and-so. Yeah, and? Well, they're not married. And? Oh, well, they're having sex, Father. How do you know? <laughs> do you serve as a pillow in their bedroom? <laughs> Or are you jealous? Huh? <laughs> Hello? Worry about your own eh, behind, okay? <laughs> Don't be looking at, instead of saying, how wonderful that the person is going to communion, huh? Maybe they went to confession right before Mass. What's it to you? Or, you know, the wonderful people who come to confession and say, I'm just here for the graces, Father. I don't have any sins. <laughs> well, if you don't have any sins, let's take the Blessed Mother off of the pedestal she's on and put you there. Huh? If you're sinless. The world has enough gatherings of people. If church is just a gathering of people, but not a gathering of disciples, we're missing the mark. I've heard it here in this church. Father, from people from this mass, we have too many Mexicans here. Mm -hmm. Silence. Let me give my sermon. And we've heard it. And it's not just me, but other people that I can call upon them right now and they have heard it. We have too much Spanish here. You know, that's a code word for we have too many Mexicans. Because they speak Spanish. And if they just came here, you know, and many of them are learning English, we should have English classes here. And maybe some of people could volunteer to do the English classes if you want people to speak English. I don't want to associate with those people. Now, who are those people? They are children of God. And how dare we call them those people? They are God's people, and they are my people, and they should be your people. You know, there was a time in the church where the Irish and the Germans, who were here in the United States longer, called a group of people those people. Mm -hmm. That is why the Polish National Catholic Church was organized back in 1897 in Scranton, Pennsylvania, because the Polish immigrants who were arriving in the United States at the time could not worship in church. They were told you have to be in the basement 
Because you're, you you're dirty and you're Polacks. And we don't like your way of, we don't like your food, you know, your sauerkraut, because it smells. And the Irish and the Germans who ran the church discriminated against the Polish people. You couldn't have, and also the Italians were discriminated against as well, because the organizer of this church, Bishop Francis Hoder, set up Italian Catholic churches, Lithuanian Catholic churches, Slovak Catholic churches, and Polish Catholic churches at the time in the United States. Because the Irish hierarchy and the Germans who were here longer looked down upon all those immigrants who were arriving here. There is a reason why we have so many Hispanics and Latinos coming to our parish. Why? Because they feel welcome here and they're discriminated against everywhere else. That's why. And I'm happy. And thank God. Because we're here for all people and we should be here for all people. You know our receptionist, Marion Burns, let's put her picture up. Okay. She's sick right now. She, she just had a stroke. Mm. But I'm, you know, she's turning 80 this year. And she's African-American. And she remembers the time when in Catholic churches here, up until 1970 in Catholic churches in the United States, African-Americans could not sit in three-fourths of the pews. They had to sit in the back. They had a reserved pew that said for blacks only in Catholic churches 50 years ago. That's not that long ago. Just because you come to church does not make you a Christian. Any more than if I go to Dunkin' Donuts every week ain't going to turn me and stand there in the middle of the Dunkin' Donuts. That's not going to turn me into a donut. <laughs> or if I go to a Chevrolet dealership it ain't going to turn me into a Malibu <laughs> coming to church will not turn you into a Christian unless we change the way we see things to look at everybody as my brother and sister not to see you know, people as less than me hmm? and it's not just in the United States where there is prejudice and prejudice and looking down at people. The worst racism and prejudice that I have seen was in Mexico. Remember, I lived in Mexico. The way the Mexicans treat the Guatemalans or the Salvadorans. When you cross the border between Guatemala and Mexico, many times you're raped, you're discriminated against. It's in every single culture and every single society. It's everywhere. It's a lot worse to cross the border between uh, Mexico and Guatemala than it is this one. And you're discriminated against. And if you want to see racism and prejudice, turn on the television in Spanish. Univision or Telemundo or uh, TV Azteca and look at, uh, uh, look at who the presenters are. They're all whites. You know, not the Indians. You want to see racism? Look at a, uh, a soap opera in Spanish. Who are the owners of the house? The white elitists. Huh? And it's like that in Mexico many times too. And, the, and the, 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 the cleaners of the house are all Indians. Indigenous people. We all need to have a reflection in ourselves. I'm not just talking about, you know, people who are Anglo-Saxon or white who need to reflect. Every single person, we all have prejudices inside of us that we need to rid ourselves of. Because when we pray, we say, our Father. We don't say, my Father. And I, have, I, I also have something else to say. And I'm going to say it. Okay? Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. He didn't say where one is when in isolation. You cannot have Christianity in isolation. He said two or three, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. And then at the end of the Gospels, he says, and lo, I am with you always until the end of the age. We have to gather together. One central thing, a meal to make Jesus present here in memory of him, of all people. 
For we are all God's people. We are all unworthy, but Jesus makes us worthy. When you go to communion, what do you say? What do we say? Lord, let's say, Lord, I, I am not worthy to receive you. But I hear, but I hear some people say what? Lord, my neighbor is not worthy to receive you. Do you say, Lord, I am not worthy? Or do you say, my neighbor is not worthy? I am not worthy, but you make me worthy. And everybody else is just as worthy as I am. Hmm? Everybody, you know, even the Pope puts his underwear the same one you do, the same way you do. Everybody. No, nobody's better than anybody else. Huh? Nobody. Have you asked yourself why so many Hispanics come to our parish? Because they are not welcome in other places and not served in other places. They are treated as second or third class citizens. Catholic parishes in many places refuse to have Holy Mass in Spanish. Do you know why? Because then the other people leave. Why have people left our parish? You remember when we first started? It's not because of anything that, you know, uh, the Roman Catholic Diocese has said that people have left. No, it's because they say we have too many Mexicans or too many Latinos. That's the number one reason why somebody leaves here. And that makes me really, really sad. And I am not here to comfort the comfortable. I am here to discomfort the comfortable and comfort the uncomfortable. That is my number one role. And I hope that I'm discomforting some, because that is my role as a prophet. Not to make people comfortable. People say, I don't want to be around those people with their language or customs. <coughs> In our own PNCC churches, Polish National Catholic Churches, there are parishes that have opened their doors to Latinos, like Father Antulio told you his parish in Chicago. They are flourishing and thriving, but those that are closed to other cultures, and there are, are dying. I've heard it said in meetings when I was in different churches, don't you dare start a Spanish mass because if you do, all the people will leave. Now, which people will leave? The disciples of Jesus leave? No, I would say the ones who are there for the show, not interested to be challenged and made uncomfortable. Let's be real. If you want to meet, G if you want to meet the devil, where should you go? Where do you go to meet the devil? Come to church. Really? The devil shows up here more than anywhere else. Makes me very sad, especially when Father Antulio was visiting here. People were coming to this particular mass. He said this mass for two, two weekends and he preached two weekends and he did a wonderful job and he's, he has done such a good job in trying to learn English. I am so proud of him, you know, and to reach out to people. And there were people walking in who come every single week and when they found out that he was going to be celebrating the Mass, they said, we don't want to be at Mass with him because of his English or other reasons. That makes me very sad. That is the reason why, because of the two weekends that he celebrated Mass here, I couldn't pay the bills. The collection suffered $3,900 to complete the payment of the building and everything else. $3,900 less. It's very sad. People refuse, you know, they, they don't donate. They vote with their pocketbooks. That's why in many places, you know, it's just sad. It makes me very sad. 
You know, I will never forget meeting the young man here in Las Vegas. He's 26 years old. I'm still in touch with him and he comes to church here. He's no longer 26, but he comes to church here. And he tells me the story that when he was in his parish in Mexico, he was part of the choir. And he showed up one day dressed as a woman to the choir. Because, you know, people go through identity crisis, all sorts of... This is the normal thing today. Okay, you know. And he showed up dressed as a woman. And the ladies, you know, the, 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 the Catholic ladies, you know, <laughs> they all ran to the priest to tell him. And so the priest came into the church, went up to the choir and said, You can't be here! Get out! And threw him out of the church. And he says to me, Father, you know where I went when I left the church? I went to clubs. I began to lose life. Because people have a need to gather. Either you gather in church or you gather somewhere else. You gather in casinos, you gather in nightclubs, you gather in all sorts of places. Huh? We all have a need to gather. And the saddest part is he got into a very loose life and is now HIV positive, as he says. Who threw him out into that world? The church. The church. Makes me very sad. In today's gospel, Jesus defines what makes you a Christian. There are those who say, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian or a follower of Jesus. I can just go to go to church. I, I can just be by myself. You know, I don't need to go to church. I just need to do nice things for people. Well, that's baloney. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them. Forgive us our trespasses, our Father. It's always together. And he promised to be with us until the end of the age when we are gathered two or three, not alone. It's easy to say, I love God when I'm alone. But with two or three, ah, that's different, isn't it? In the gospel, Jesus constantly calls people together to eat together, to pray together. All people. You think that every, I like everybody here that comes to church here? You think I like you all? I mean, you know, you think I like every single person that comes here? No, I'm a human being. I see someone come around. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> but you're my family. You know, in church, I don't have friends. Friends you can have everywhere, you know. You can have friends in the bar. In church, we are what? We are brothers and sisters. Huh? You choose your brothers and sisters? Uh -uh. No. And it doesn't matter your color of your skin. Your blood is the same. Hello? Christianity cannot be lived in isolation. Church is community. It's a must. In fact, what's the one thing Jesus asked us to do to keep his memory alive? It's what we are doing right now. Here. What did he do? What did he say? Do this. Do what? What do we do here? We eat together yes. everybody do this in memory of me together not alone you can't have Eucharist alone you cannot have mass by yourself irrespective of color or language preferences together we are all God's people his people everyone a couple of weeks ago a lady came to talk to me she comes to church here every week and she is a pole dancer in one of the local strip clubs here. You know that we have strip clubs in Las Vegas. Did you know that? <laughs> okay. And she says to me, Father, I may be a... I can't say this word, what she said. I may be a... 
She said, S L. Okay, I can't use that word. She said, Father, I may, I have to be careful what I say, because you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, they've never heard words like that, so I have to be very careful. Okay. So this, she says, Father, I may be a loose person. Is that a good, a good way? I may be a loose person, <laughs> but I'm a Catholic one. <laughs> Gives her dignity, doesn't it? She comes here. And so what? She's on the road. She ain't a finished product. At least she's coming here, huh? And little by little, I have the hope that she's going to leave that light. That she will stop pole dancing. Hmm? But if we say, oh no, you can't be here. You're such a sinner. Uh! How does that change people? A lot of people have their faith in their finger. You know, they're, they, they're good at pointing. Huh? But as you know, coming to church doesn't guarantee that you will be a Christian. Hmm? Coming here won't guarantee that you'll be a Christian either. Unless you reflect and repent. That means changing your mind. Seeing how you need to change. And show up when we have different events together. Hmm? Like on September 10th is our one year anniversary. Let's put this slide up. Everybody needs to put that on their calendar. And we're going to have a mass in English and Spanish at 6 o'clock. Saturday, no, uh, Saturday, uh, September 10th at 6 o'clock. Hello? Okay. And we need everybody to sign up of what they're going to bring that day because it's a potluck. So you, you need to sign up RSVP and sign up. What are you going to bring? Drinks, dishes, desserts, everything. Okay. And I don't want to hear any complaining about how much Spanish or how much English. Okay. Part of it is to put up with it. Okay. So sign up if you can bring a, a, a dish. So uh, Rachel is here, stand up so people can see you. And Anne Marie, she's helping her. So tell them what you're going to bring and then uh, sign up, okay? Perfect. All right. And we're also going to have sign ups at the front desk so you could also sign up, okay? We need to celebrate together because we've been open a year and we've had a lot of forces working against us hmm? not to be open. But we're making it together because we are a family. Mm? So don't make me sad and not show up. Okay. I wonder if Jesus came in here today, would you, would I welcome him? That's my question to all of us. Would you or would I welcome him if he came in here today? You know, because we have this imagination of what Jesus will be. You want to see Jesus? Look around you. Do you know when Mother Teresa was asked by the reporter who put her out into the world, the BBC reporter, he says to her, Ah, I wouldn't do what you are doing for a million dollars. And she looked at him and she says, well, I wouldn't either, but I do it for Jesus. Whatsoever you do to these, the least of my people, you do unto me. Matthew 25. Hmm? You do it. You do it to me. You want to adore Jesus? You have to learn to adore the people around you, all the people, hmm? and to accept every single person. Hmm? So, my question this weekend for all of us is, are we coming to church to become disciples or are we coming to church just to gather? Because if we're coming to church to be disciples, we need to be open to change and to be challenged. And I hope that there's some challenge happening to all of us today. And it's a challenge for everybody. You know, we all need to change. A lot of times, you know, the, uh, the oppressed become the oppressors, which is why, you know, in many, in many ways, uh, 
in the Polish National Catholic Church, there are people who are resisting, you know, opening the parishes up to those of other cultures and languages. how quickly the chicken forgets that he or she was an egg. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. in, this, in, 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 in other Catholic churches, not just the Polish National Catholic Church, but in the Roman Catholic Church and others, you know, we have a history of all of us being immigrants, all of us. And we were all discriminated against at one point or another. Your families, especially those of you who are Italian here. You know, the Italians went through so much. Those of you who are Irish, do you know that there were signs in the United States that said, no Irish need apply? Horrible things. I could go down the list. I'm telling you, there is a reason why the Latinos, the Hispanics come here. And it's because they feel welcome here. And I want to continue that. And you need to help me with that. Okay? All of us. Yeah. Hmm? That's, we, need to, we need to create a church of welcome. And a church where that, you know, we're all together. Hmm? And seeing each other as brothers and sisters. Irrespective of our backgrounds and our colors and our language preferences. Yeah. Hmm? People ask me, Father Adam, you know, how many languages do you speak? Why does that matter? What do you care? How many languages do I speak? There's only one language necessary. And that's the language we can all speak. And that's the universal language of love. love. <laughs> Let's speak that language to each other always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.